Washington outlasts Oregon in an absolute classic. It was a thriller on a Saturday afternoon. Washington wins 36-33. This was a, a battle between two incredible quarterbacks. It lived up to the hype. Michael Penix Jr. throws for 302 yards, four touchdowns. Bo Nix throws for 337 uh, and two touchdowns. Or I should say Penix throws for four touchdowns. Nix throws for two touchdowns. Oregon rushed for 207 yards. We thought that was going to be a big key to watch. Can Washington's defense stop Bucky uh, Bucky Irving, not Bucky Richardson? And uh, how how are they able to win the battle in the trenches? Honestly, they did that in the first half. Oregon kind of took control in the second half. It really felt like the Ducks were going to run away with this late in that ball game, but a couple of key moments. Oregon's inability to convert on fourth down, for me, that was the big turning point in this game. Yeah, Mitch, I mean, if you look at the stats that we have on this slide, Oregon was the better team pretty much all day. I mean, it's if you look at just the consistency, if you flipped on at any certain point in time in this game, you were going to see Oregon being the better team, right? Winning the down, winning the situation. But there's two big reasons why Washington ends up winning this game. Number one, you kind of mentioned it, the fourth downs. Right. Oregon going for it three separate times, including once like inside the 10 yard line where they could have kicked a field goal right at the end of the half. And uh, if you look at that final score, that field goal might have mattered a little bit. Um, and, and then also once at the end of the game where they could have punted away and given Penix Jr. a longer field to cover. And instead, they try to step on the throat. I, I love the aggression. Don't get me wrong. I love the aggression from Dan Lanning and co. But it did not pay off today. And, and your second primary reason why I think Washington wins this game is they don't have to be better than you for, you know, 75% of the game because they're so explosive, right? They're just so explosive that at any point in time, they can hit a long pass. They can, you know, find a big score out of nowhere and they can, you know, just completely bury you in just one or two plays. This is something that they can do that I think a lot of teams across this country cannot do quite as effectively as them. So that, you know, it, it doesn't matter if they get beat, right? It doesn't matter that they didn't rush for 100 yards. It doesn't matter that, technically speaking, Bo Nix outpassed Michael Penix Jr. All that matters is at the end of the day, Penix has four touchdowns and is able to score effectively. And, you know, the Oregon Ducks, they, they scored plenty fine, but they just weren't able to find, you know, the little things, right? Take advantage of those little moments on the field. It was, it was a, a game of inches. And... You know, Washington was able to capitalize in some of the bigger situations. Obviously, the fourth down stops were were gargantuan. That final drive when Washington only needs 33 seconds, two plays to score what ends up being the game-winning touchdown. Roma Dunze afterwards said he and Pinnock's kind of nodded towards each other on that final, final offensive snap, and Rome knew the ball was coming his way, that it was going to be a fade into the corner of the end zone. Uh, I, I finally, Garrett, I, I've waited for a long time to resurface that that preseason thread where I got all kinds of hate for being the only person, I think, on the planet that picked Romo Dunze to win the Bolitnikoff Award. Everybody and their mother was picking uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. And and today was the day, right, to resurface that, to, to bring that up, to just pile shame on the haters' heads because Odunze had eight for 126, two touchdowns in the biggest moment. Right, He did not disappear. He didn't fade into the background. He didn't let Oregon's focus on him prevent him from being a difference maker. And to me, that's why Odunze is going to be my wide receiver one going into the NFL draft next season. Marvin Harrison Jr. is probably the most talented wide receiver on the planet, but what Odunze is able to do week in, week out against the biggest competition, he hasn't disappeared in a single game yet. And for me... You know, yes, he's in an awesome scheme, an air raid that is designed to put up gaudy numbers. But there's nothing fluky about this, right? This is not either a bunch of tunnel screens and just racking up yards after the catch. This isn't a bunch of in-breaking slant routes. This is big boy football, route running, breaking away from a defender. And it feels like half the time just going up and being the better athlete, right? And, and so for me, Odunze is a guy that, makes Washington a national championship contender. Uh, Liam Blutman, the author of No Context College Football, asked us for a bold prediction during our preview show 
on Wednesday night, and I tweeted back to him, Odunze goes for over 100 yards, two touchdowns in a statement win. It's exactly exactly what happened. Yeah, man, it looks like you were, you know, preseason, you weren't trying to be different like a lot of people were accusing you of. You were just trying to be right. You are just trying to get that one accurate. And look, you called your shot, and, you know, looks like it's paying off. And that's not to take away – this was, in my opinion, this game was such a battle of stars. That's not to take away from anything that Oregon did – you know, obviously, you kind of mentioned it. Bucky Irving had a fantastic game on the ground for Oregon. Bo Nix was great on Oregon's side. But Troy Franklin, the wide receiver as well for the Oregon Ducks, had a great game in sure. his own respect, too. They eight catches, 154, and a touchdown. He was a huge weapon in that game. And I was surprised at how, you know, kind of effective at the end of the day both teams were in all phases. To me, this looked like a game between two of the best teams in the country. And, you know, I'm I'm going to go ahead and say, and I, I don't think this is necessarily a hot take at this point, but I think this is going to get rematched. I think we're going to get to see this one again in Las Vegas when they play this one uh, for the conference. And I'm excited for that because I think that Washington's home field did play a part in this. I'm not saying that Washington's not the better team, but I think the home field helped in spots. And, and I'm really excited to see neutral field. I want to watch this one again. I want to see you know, kind of what ends up like, how do these two teams make adjustments for each other? Cause it just seemed like they were both just so back and forth. And, you know, I, I think there's a good chance that these are two of the best four teams in the country. I don't know if they'll get rewarded like that, but there's a chance that these are two of the best four teams in the country. On a neutral playing field, these two teams match up again, Washington or Oregon. I, I think it's so hard to repeat things. I would pick Oregon on a neutral field. Um, they typically say that home field's worth about three points. Um, and that ended up being a difference there. And also a pushed field goal, um, which, man, just got to feel bad for the kid. You know, regardless of the outcome, regardless of who wins, loses, you hate it to be like that, where, you know, you storm down the field, you give your team a chance, and you just barely push enough of a field goal, and it ends up on the kicker. So you hate to see it. But I do think that if this game were played on a neutral field, I would probably pick the Oregon Ducks to end up winning the rematch. Because if you do look at the total yards, you look at the the way that both these teams played, the difference was the fourth downs. I think Dan Lanning would kind of kind of play a little bit more conservatively in the way that he, you know, yeah. kind of picks his spots, right? Just saying, like, yeah. hey, it's the end of the game. Go ahead and kick that thing down the field, right? Make Michael Penix Jr. beat you. And he might. Michael Penix Jr. might beat you, right? Because he's just that level of good, and they are that explosive as an offense. But make him do it. Put the ball in your defense's hands. A defense, by the way, that played pretty well. Both these defenses played really well. Both had a sack. I think both had, like, four tackles for losses. They were just they're doing a really good job kind of keeping the respective offenses from completely exploding like we're used to. But I, I think neutral field, I'd probably lean Oregon just because it's really, really hard to repeat and beat a team like this twice in the same year. Gracious, yep. how about that?